Let's talk about some good DH candidates for the Phils this season. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to Philly's Hats to Media, and today we're going to be talking about some names that could work uh, in the designated hitter's uh, spot in the lineup this upcoming season. Now, guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you have that yet. Please share the bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Um, so we all know what is happening right now, you know, around Major League Baseball. I do not want to say the word, uh, but it is stopping uh, the Phillies from, you know, officially making a move, uh, which is very, very disappointing, and uh, we are all sick and tired of this nonsense. We're not going to, you know, sit here and talk about that. It's very negative. It's very upsetting. It's very, very just sad. Uh, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about some names that could work. Uh, you know, for the Phil's DH this upcoming season, right? So it was designated hitter. That's one thing they officially agreed on. I've been saying it for months. I've been saying it pretty much all season. I said, you know, the CBA negotiations, I said, DH is coming to National League. And some people think, oh, well, it's not official. You know, technically at the time it was not official, but they have confirmed it. Rob Manfred uh, confirmed it. Uh, that the DH will be coming to the National League. So a universal DH that we saw in a 60-game uh, short season uh, in 2020. Uh, so that is now permit. Of course, it went away in 2021 as we went back to the original CBA rules. Uh, of course, it was kind of a different CBA in 2020 than we, of course, we went back to the original wall, uh, where National League ballparks, pitchers will hit. And of course, now that, you know, the new CBA being negotiated, we all knew DH would come to National League at some point, and it is now officially here. Uh, so I'm very, very excited about this. I was against it for a while. But I was on record saying that I was against DH in National League. Even last season, I'd say at the end of the season, I was kind of in favor of it. I mean, you know, some injuries due to these, you know, pitchers hitting. It's just not a good idea. Uh, and I was there to witness the last Phillies pitcher at home run, Kyle Gibson, right, against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So I witnessed history. Uh, and I, I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe, you know, you never know of a, of a circumstance where maybe, you know, it's an extra inning game and all the position players are going to have to call in a pitcher to pinch hit. Uh, that occasionally does happen in the American League, uh, but uh, at least for a while. I witnessed the last, you know, Phillies pitcher home run in, in a very long time, right? It, it will be a very long time. And the thing I love about designated hitter, before we get into the candidates, let's talk about how designated hitter will help the Phillies, right? There's a lot of positives. Uh, about having DH uh, now in the National League and uh, you know just you know anywhere I mean it, it's a great thing it really helps this team especially you go take a look at JT Muto uh, who's one of the best catchers in baseball uh, he's unbelievable right I mean he kind of did have a down season compared to 18 19 and 20 uh, you know in 2020 but I fully expect him to bounce back he's battling some injuries the thing I love about him right he's a great offensive catcher uh, right of course he's good defensively too but uh, he's a he's a very good athletic offensive player uh, and just talking about offense here and uh, you know let's say you know it's a Sunday finale you know he's been on his news a lot uh, we're trying to you know get a series win here you know usually this is a day and of course we don't have a backup catcher right now and Andrew now, now with the Reds and you know of course with this lockout we don't know who that will be uh, but let's just say right I mean we need to give him a day off well guess what he could just DH on the Sunday finale, right? And, and that's the great thing. Of course, there is going to be one you know, primary guy, which we'll get into a little bit, uh, but this gives guys uh, you know, some time off in the field, right? I mean, okay, the Sunday finale, you put him in DH. Of course, you know, sometimes, of course, he's just going to get the day off, period. Uh, but I love that. I just love that. Another thing, Bryce Harper, in 2020, you saw it. You saw it, right? And he was having some back problems. At the end of the season, 2020, against the Washington Nationals. That was the second to last series. He didn't even hardly even play on right field. And they just, they just put him at DH. Uh, that's just a wonderful thing. I mean, uh, you, how many times do you see him in 2021 have to sit harp because his back was sore? Of course, you know, if it's bad enough, you just have to sit him regardless. But guess what? He's not standing out in right field for nine innings. He's in the dugout, and he's coming up uh, for four plate appearances on average, of course. Uh, we all know that. But, uh, you know, I, I just love that. And also another aspect, Zach Wheeler, you know, going seven innings. The Phillies lead one nothing. You know, runner at third, one out, you have a chance uh, to make it 2 nothing. It's a tight pitcher's duel. Every run counts. Now, well, guess what? Zach Wheeler's spot is due up at next in the lineup. Runner at third, one out. It's a tough decision for George Ronnie. Do I take out a guy who's throwing a shutout? Uh, you know, the entire game from, you know, seven shutout innings, and then I go to my shaky bullpen, or 
do I leave him in the game? And the, the chances are not very likely of him possibly getting a hit. He probably will strike out or, you know, ground out or something like that or something of that nature. Or do I bring in a pinch hitter uh, and then I have to go to my bullpen? Uh, and, and this is great. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. You're going to see pitchers in the National League, uh, you know, they, we're, we're going to see more innings pitch. I mean, there's no question. You're going to see starters go deeper now. Uh, it's, going to have a, it's going to have a big effect. And I talked about the positives of having DH. I mean, is there really any negatives? I mean, you're going to have, you know, the pitchers, WR offensively is terrible, right? I mean, terrible. I, mean, I will kind of miss the excitement of, you know, like maybe bunting the runner over. I kind of like that strategy a little bit, but I think this is going to help Joe Girardi tremendously, right? I mean, he's an American League type manager. There's no longer going to be American League guys. You go take a look at the American League guys, like Nelson Cruz. You go take a look at some old names, like Edwin Encarnacion was an American League guy. You know, David Ortiz was an American League guy. I guess what? There's no more American League guys. Remember Carlos Santana? He was an American League guy, right, from 2018. Uh, now at the Kansas City Royals. Uh, he was an American League guy. There's no more American League guys. Right? I mean, because the AL and the NL will now be playing the same roles in that category, which I just love, right? Which I just love. So it has a, has a great impact. There's very few negatives about it. There's so many positives you can take out of the universal DH. Uh, but the time to talk about some candidates. There's a lot of candidates on this Phillies team uh, to, uh, you know, fit in that designated hitter spot. The first thing that comes to my mind is Alec Bohm, right? Who is a terrible defensive third base. We all know what he could do offensively. We saw it in the 2020 season. Uh, and at Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to work with Kevin Long uh, this offseason due to the uh, inept and pathetic work stoppage that we've been having to endure. Uh, so that's a very, very big bummer. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of progress has been lost uh, there, and that's very, very disappointing. Uh, this is having a very negative impact on that. But anyway, I'm not here to, you know, rant about that anymore. If Alan Bohm can return his 2020 form that he had, you know, and, uh, you know, not really uh, see much time at third base, because he's just not a good defender. You even put him at first base. He saw, he saw him at first base. He was terrible at first. He's just a terrible defender. You can't hide him out in left field. You can't hide him out in left field. It's not going to work. It's going to be the Reese Hoskins 2018 all over again. It would be a catastrophe. Uh, that would not work. Uh, so I think Alec Boom, he's got to be your DH. And I've been floating around the idea. You know, sign Chris Bryant, put him at third. If you get him for the right price, put him at third. You know, got the Harper connection. I think you're going to get Chris Bryant at a discount now. I really, really do. Because these guys want to play, especially without this lockout. This is something that's maybe helped the Phillies with the lockout, right? There's something about the lockout to maybe help the Phillies is I think that now there's going to be some discounts for these players now, right? I mean, they're going to want to sign once the lockout is lifted. Uh, and, uh, you know, because it's going to be, bam, you know, bam, 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 right? You know, a little spring training and then the season, right? It's not going to be this, you know, a normal off season, you know, of course. Uh, so I think this is good. There's going to be more sense of urgency uh, to sign a deal. Uh, so uh, I definitely could see Chris Bryant going to the Phillies. I think that's a very realistic possibility. Uh, so he could he could go over and man third base. Now I got Alec Bum as the designated hitter. Uh, of course, Reese Hoskins, another guy who is not a very good defender. Uh, he, I think, would do well uh, in the DH spot. I think a guy has to be Alec Bohm, but uh, Reese Hoskins is a name that you could put in there. It, that's the wonderful thing. There doesn't, have, of course, there doesn't have to be one guy, right? There doesn't just have to be one guy. As I talked about, you know, the Sunday finale, JT Muto. You know, it, you know, it's it's August and September, right? It's the dog days. We're grinding. Uh, you know, everybody's tired. Uh, you know, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, against the Braves. JT Muto, you know, has been on his knees for the past, you know, six days. Uh, guess what? Skip, you know, he needs a day off, right? He needs a day off. Well, hey, he's fine having four ABs uh, and get him off his knees for a day. I mean, that that is how I look at that. I mean, it's, it's huge and it doesn't have to be, of course, just one guy. Uh, so that's that's the wonderful thing. But there's going to be one primary guy, uh, but I, I still think that Reese Hoskins could definitely see some time there. There's no question about that. So y'all know he's battled some health issues. We definitely could see that. Uh, Kyle Schwarber, a guy, of course, who was not on our roster, is currently a free agent. That the Phillies were very, very close to signing uh, before the lockout happened. And you know, apparently, uh, apparently, what I'm hearing is the Phillies' chances of signing Schwarber have been hurt a little bit uh, because of the fact that more National League teams could use him. Now that the Universal DH now is uh, official, uh, so you, and, that, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, so more National League teams will be looking at him. Uh, of course, the American League teams always were uh, because they had, you know, always had DH. But now there's going to be more NL teams looking at him. Uh, of course, the only reason why the Phillies were looking at him before is because they needed a left fielder, and they still need a left fielder. Uh, so uh, Kyle Schwarber, who is not a very good defender, we all know that he's not a very good left fielder. He's not absolutely like treacherous, you know, atrociously bad. Uh, he's not a good defender. Uh, you know, he, he's not. Uh, he definitely uh, is a below average left fielder. I could definitely see 
see him get some time designated here. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but in my opinion, I think it goes Bohm, Schwarber, Hoskins, kind of in that order. Uh, I think that Schwarber would be a uh, very, very good you know, fit in that spot. I think, I, as I said, I do think it will be you know, primarily you know, one guy. Uh, but I think you're going to see a lot of names. I think you're going to see a lot of names in there. As, as I said, as we get you know, you know, towards the end of the season, you know, we need to preserve Bryce Harper's you know, production uh, and uh, you know, kind of preserve his energy. You know, let's say we're in a you know, big playoff race. And listen, he's been playing every day since the All-Star break. You know, we're, on, we're on September 15th. Uh, you know, he's grinding, uh, hey, you know, you know it's, it's a, it's a you know, getaway game in the week, right? You know, we're on the road or at home, wherever. Uh, hey, we're going to put him at DH today. So as I keep going back to, it's just, it's just such an advantage. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, it just it makes everything so much better. Alec Paul has got to be the primary guy, right? We all know he's the worst defender on the team. He's the worst defender on the team. Uh, and uh, I think that's who you're going to see in there. I, I think it's going to be Alec Boehm. I think they have a very good chance of signing Chris Bryant. I, I'm kind of predicting that Bryant will sign with, with the Phils. I think if it's the right price, I think we're going to get him, right? Got the Harper connection. They same went to the same high school. Uh, you know, of course, in, in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, we're on the same Little League team growing up. Uh, of course, uh, Harper is, you know, you know, if you don't know, you know, from Henderson, Nevada. Of course, Chris Bryant also from that area uh, out in Las Vegas. Uh, near Henderson. So, I mean, they, they have a connection. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Brian would be very happy. I mean, of course, you know, we've missed the playoffs. We've been a final team. And this is a team that has a lot of potential. If we can get our bullpen under you know, under control, this could be a dangerous team. Let me just say that this could be a dangerous team. Uh, so I do think we get him. And honestly, I still think we get Schwarber. I still think we get Schwarber. And also, Didi Gregorius. Let me just say this. He's not going anywhere. I mean, I wish he would, but he's not. Another guy. Terrible defender. Terrible defender. I think you're going to see him get some time. Uh, there, uh, but primarily at the beginning of the season, it's going to be guys like Alec Bohm, Kyle Schwarber, and, and probably DD too. Uh, you know, but uh, primarily Alec Bohm. I, I think Alec Bohm. Uh, you just got to take a look at the guy. Who is the worst defender? And signing Chris Bryant would make a tremendous amount of sense to have Alec Bohm as the DH. And also, I think you got to look at righty lefty too. Uh, you know, depending on which day, uh, which you all know, Joe Girardi, Binder Joe, right? I mean, Binder Joe. Uh, he's the kind of guy that's going to look at those numbers. Uh, so he's he's going to do what he wants to do. Uh, so uh, this is great. I'm very excited about this. Uh, it's just wonderful. And of course, you know, center field. My my in my opinion, with the bullpen, the biggest question mark on this team: center field and the bullpen. Because of course, left field is still you know vacant. Uh, but I think there's a lot of names that could fit there. You know, Schwarber, Castellanos, Peterson. You know, etc. So I think that there's a good amount of names out there that could work. But in center field, eh. Uh, I think you're gonna have to go to a low-level guy like you know, you know Kevin Pillar. You can't, as Sean said, you can't give Adam Hazing another chance out there. You can't. I mean, let's say you know he you know puts up good numbers in Triple A. Maybe you let him see some time out there. Maybe in in May or you know early June. But you keep that. That's it. You know, I think that uh, going into the season with Adam, I don't think I, I, the, very, the chances are very unlikely. If they go into the season with Adam Hazley as the everyday center fielder, that's going to be treacherous. I would love Adam Hazley to work out because he's a homegrown talent, you know, drafted in 2017 in the first round. I think it would be a great story to have this guy work out because he is not working out. He's been a total disaster. I understand he's had some problems off the field. I respect that. I'm sorry that he's had those problems, but we have to have good on-the-field production. So Alcom, make him your primary DH. Sign Chris Bryant. Sign Kyle Schwarber. Dombrowski does have a lot of work to do, and I honestly was against the Nick Castellano signing for a while, and I'm still not crazy about it because of the amount of money he was going to want. Uh, but I think there's more incentive and more reason uh, for you know you know ball clubs, not just the Phillies, to sign Nick Castellanos because of that you know you know losing a draft pick going away, right? With that rule going away, which is a wonderful thing. I always thought that that was silly. Uh, so I'm very very happy uh, that that has gone. So now there's more incentive to sign guys like this Nick Castellanos. Uh, so now it's you could justify it more. Uh, so uh, let me you know, let me know what y'all think below. I mean, who do you think you know should be the Phillies DH this upcoming season? Of course, there's going to be a lot of different names in there. Uh, it's not going to be like the Boston Red Sox, you know, back when Ortiz was playing. Uh, you know, when it was pretty much just one guy. I mean, like you know, like 85 percent of the time. Uh, you know, this is different, right? I mean, there's a lot of names on here. I think you're going to see some time at DH. Uh, so I'm very, very excited about this. A lot of advantages. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please hit the notification bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media. Link in the description section at Philly's Hot Stove Media, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, follow me on Twitter at P Hot Stove Media. Call or text 267 225 Email me, Philly's Hot Stove Media at gmail.com. So, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, this CBA, man, keeps going on and on and on. I'll see you all on Saturday for the weekly update. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys.